don't have to walk in darkness. I love this sixth sign in the Gospel of John. Why? Because I still remember clearly how back in the 1970s, I was stumbling around in spiritual darkness. This is Jackie for Rx for Joy. This video is looking at the story of the healing of a man that was born blind. I hope this video helps you to think about how to study a story in the Bible. The Apostle John chose seven signs or seven miracle stories to help us to understand who Jesus is so that we can believe and have spiritual light and spiritual life. This story is in chapter 9. It covers the whole chapter. And you can pause right now and read that chapter. As you read it, ask some basic questions like, who are the people in the story? When is it taking place? Where is it taking place? What are the major events of the story? John chose this story and particular details to help us to learn a lesson. So first of all, we look and say, well, where did this take place? Chapter eight, the last verses help us to know. Jesus is speaking to Jewish leaders in the temple. He has claimed to be, I am the name of God. It's a clear announcement that he is deity. In verse 59, therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Next it says, Jesus is passing by. So he's come out of the temple and passing by that area and he sees a man. I'm sure there were many beggars around the temple area and yet Jesus chose this man. He was born blind. His disciples are with him and they ask a common question. Who sinned? Was it this man or was it his parents? The people at that time believed that if you were sick like this, it must have be because of sin. Here's a great comment by David Gusick. Think of all the times the little blind boy asked his mother, why am I blind? Perhaps she never felt she had a good answer. Jesus explained, it is because God wants to work in and through even this. Jesus pointed the question away from why and on to the idea, what can God do in this? God overruled this state of blindness. And this little boy grew to be a man who would one day see Jesus, see his face. The whole idea is that people would see the glory of God and everyone that was around that area of the temple would see this powerful work of God and hopefully turn to the true light of the world. There's an unusual detail in this story about how Jesus heals this man. He spits, he makes mud, and he places it on the man's face. Then he tells him, go, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. What do you think this man was feeling? He's been humbled his whole life, stumbling around, being accused of sin, having to be a beggar, and now he's told to go make your way to this pool. He has mud put on his eyes. And you and I know that Jesus could just speak and heal him. So I have to think about this detail and say, why did Jesus heal him in this way? And there are several ideas. One, being blind, the man would actually realize that Jesus was touching him. He could sense that mud on his eyes. He had to submit to that, submit to the touch of Jesus. And he had to submit in obedience to go to the Siloam. He had to have some kind of faith. And David Gusick comments, 
Jesus found it important to change his methods of healing so one could never make a formula of the methods. The power was in God, not in a method. So this pool of Siloam is across the city. The water came from Hezekiah's tunnel, which was carved out years and years ago, 1,750 feet of tunnel, bringing water from outside the city. I've actually walked in this tunnel twice, and it is just totally dark. If you don't have a flashlight, you can see nothing. Salome means scent because the water had been sent from outside the city through the tunnel into the pool. And this pool meant life for those inside the city walls, especially when the city was besieged. So isn't it interesting that Jesus sent this blind man to a pool, pool named Scent. I can't imagine how excited this man must have been. Everyone should have been jumping up and down. But instead, the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, come to him and question him. They had no compassion for him. They were appalled that Jesus would work on a Sabbath. So the conflict is heating up. Who is this Jesus? But the blind man seems not only have to receive sight in his eyes, but he has spiritual insight as well. Listen to his words, verses 32 and 33. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. That just should send shivers down you. This is what makes the sign so unique. Never has someone born blind been healed. Jesus goes looking for him, and when he finds him, he asks him some questions. Do you believe in the Son of Man? This is the most important question of all, even more important than receiving sight. The healed man chooses to believe in Jesus. He actually bows down to worship. So he has received physical and spiritual healing. The Pharisees are an important part of this story. When you're doing a story, you want to look at all the characters we see that the Pharisees understand that this has happened. They know the truth, but they reject Jesus. They even say, we're not blind. John 10, sums up the Pharisees' problem. They say, you being a man, make yourself out to be God. And that's the most important issue for all of us. We must know him as God and man so that we too bow down and worship and receive spiritual healing. My Rx for joy today, humble ourselves and admit our need and helplessness so that the eyes of our hearts can be open to understand the gospel. Be like the blind man and give a testimony to someone about what God has done. Look at verse 25. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see.